library in McKinney just became the first library in Texas to use automatic robots to help visitors. Spencer Smith, the director of libraries for the city of McKinney, who is not a robot, joins us this morning. Hey there. Hey, I, I don't have evidence of that. You just have to take my word for it. Okay, so. okay. I, I think you're human. I, I think yeah. you have a beating heart. Uh, what are these robots doing? Fill us in. Yeah, so um, you've probably seen them around at restaurants uh, delivering food to people. Uh, it's the Orion Star robot, and we thought, hey, that's really interesting and neat. And we have these kind of menial tasks of returning books that people take a look at but don't want. And oftentimes they'll put them back in the wrong place, so it's hard to find. And if we can get them to just set them on the robot and have the robot bring those books back where we can get them in the right place, um, that'll just save us a lot of time and help everybody find things easier. And after we got them in, we also started programming them. So if someone wants to say, hey, where's the science fiction section, but they don't want to talk to one of us, uh, they, the robot can literally guide them over to where they're, where they're looking for to start their browsing. So. Oh, oh, so where's the future? Like, do you think you, that, that these robots are going to expand their job even more? I think we're going to try to squeeze as much value out of them as we can. Uh, the the key, though, with most automation for us is that it allows us to redirect our human capital to be that human interaction that people need. So they're not going to replace our people. Okay, uh, they're just going <laughs> to free up our people to give better service. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I think some people argue, you know, we don't want them to replace jobs, but it is nice to have two extra helpers around. I heard they tidy things up, too. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, so it, it's actually, it's funny. The kids love them. So if the kids see something that's not where it's supposed to be, they'll just set it on the robot and the robot will take it back where, where we can take care of it. Oh, so is this at just one library right now? It is. Out of our two libraries, one has two floors and the robots can't really work the elevator or the stairs yet. Um, so yeah, we just have it at our one location. Uh, once it figures out how to press that button on the elevator, though, we'll definitely get one at that at that other branch. Do you think now we'll see other um, other libraries and other cities using these robots too? I think so. I think um, other things are already in the works. Libraries have a long history of automation. These are just kind of the first ones that are out there on the public floor, so the public can can kind of mingle with them. And I think just as the nature of things go, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, we're the first just because a couple of days before another contract went through. So I, I think libraries are pretty innovative institutions and uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Do they have names? They don't. Uh, oh. That's uh, We get a lot of questions on that. I think this fall we're going to have a public naming uh, contest. Yes. Uh, to see kind of what we can get. Hopefully it's not like Robotty McRobot face, but we can uh, we can figure <laughs> something out to, to get them a couple of good names. They have their own little personalities, and uh, I think the public is just going to love them the more they get to know them. I'm going Bob and Rob. I don't know. Uh, let us let us know when I you like do it. the contest because I want I want to be part. We'll we'll do it on social media too. So we'll do. We'll do.